Approval testing is not the same as characterization testing. And it's not the same as acceptance testing either. In this video, I'm going to explain what Dave Farley and perhaps many others still don't understand about approval testing. Dave Farley and I had a long chat recently in his engineering room, which was great. He really is an expert on continuous delivery and modern software engineering. Something bothered me afterwards though, about what he said on approval testing. Now, Dave freely admits he got it wrong when he first heard about approval testing, and that says a lot for his intellectual honesty and professionalism. However, he's also said he still prefers the name characterization testing, and he doesn't think it's suitable to use in test-driven development or behavior-driven development. So he may have moved on from thinking it's the same as acceptance testing, but it really isn't the same as characterization testing either. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate that. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. On my channel, I have content for technical coaches and developers. If you enjoy what you see here, please hit like and subscribe. A few months back, before our engineering room conversation, Dave Farley released a video called, What is Approval Testing? And I was really pleased to see this. Approval testing is one of my favorite techniques and I don't think enough people know about it. And in general, Dave does a good job of explaining what it is and he even gave me a mention towards the end. Dave shows us all how to use an approval testing tool to get some existing legacy code under test. And what he shows in his demo is an example of characterization testing. And this is a term from Michael Feather's classic book, Working Effectively with Legacy Code. Feathers says, in nearly every legacy system, what the system does is more important than what it is supposed to do. A characterization test is a test that characterizes the actual behavior of a piece of code. So Michael Feathers goes on to explain how to create a characterization test. And the process is pretty much what Dave showed in his video. You create a test case that executes your code with some known good input. You gather the output in a file. And then subsequent runs of the test will compare against the stored reference output. And any difference, and that fails the test. Dave and I agree that this use of approval testing is a great approach for refactoring legacy code. If you make a refactoring mistake, the output should change and your test will fail you can back out your mistake and try again. It's important to have this kind of safety net when you're refactoring. And using an approval testing tool is a very convenient way to do it. So far, so good. However, Dave levels several criticisms at approval testing for situations when he thinks it's less suitable. His biggest concern is that the tests become self-referential. The result is correct only because a previous version of the system produced the same result. He says this is not a strong assertion of correctness, only of consistency. He's also concerned that if the output is large and complex, you could miss errors in it and mistakenly accept a wrong result. He goes on to say that for these reasons, he wouldn't use approval tests for new development with test-driven development or behavior-driven development. So in our recent engineering room conversation, I tried to explain to Dave why I don't agree with his assessment, but I could tell he was still pretty skeptical. I thought perhaps a code example might help to persuade him. The demo I've got for you today is of the vending machine cutter. This is an exercise where you need to build the brains of an old fashioned vending machine. One of those great big boxes you might see in a corridor at a university or something with like chips and candy and, and cans of, of drinks in it. So the description of the exercise here on salmoncoaching.org goes through all the user stories that you need to implement. But I've started working just on the first one, insert coin. Because the machine has got a, a coin slot where you can put certain kinds of coins in, a little display that tells you either insert coin or the value of the stuff you've already put in there. It's got a little keypad for selecting a product and then a little coin return tray for any coins that get rejected or that you ask it to return. I've already made a start on this exercise because I think that's the most typical situation that you get into 
where you're building a new feature on top of some existing code that already works. So I've got some code here already. The vending machine has a display, it has an internal balance and some coins that are in the machine. And I've got some tests for the common kinds of coin that you can insert them. So these test cases might not look exactly as you're used to, this is an approval test. And I've got some supporting classes that I'll show you in a minute. But this is one of my test cases, the machine should accept nickels. And when I insert the nickel, then I should verify the output. So this test case is only really describing the scenario, what, what is going to happen, what is the user going to do. To really understand what is being tested here, you need to look at the verified file or the approved file. And this is actually what is going to be verified when the, the test runs. And a, a new run of the test would check that the output is the same as this. So here you can see the full feature, the nickel being accepted. The vending machine at the start has this display saying insert coin, no balance, no coins. Then you insert a nickel and the display updates to show that we've got five cents in the machine. Um, it's keeping track of the balance and the coins that the machine contains. So this test here is using this story class that is kind of just really a very small class. It's just keeping track of what it is you want to um, show in the scenario. It's just appending to this to verify string that it will then return when you ask it. What it's really doing the work here is my vending machine printer. So a printer is a kind of class that knows how to display um, the essential statistics or the essential parts that you want to check about some of your production code, in this case, the vending machine. So this has a print method and the print method will go through that important uh, public data in the, the machine, what's on the display, what, what does it think its balance is, what, the, what coins does it think it contains, and it's just going to format that nicely as a string. And that's the, the code that is going to produce um, this, this part of the, uh, the output. So that's the tests I've got so far, and I've got tests that can check that it accepts dimes, nickels, and quarters, and uh, that it already has uh, a balance, that like it already contains some, some coins, that when you insert another coin, it will successfully add that to the balance and, and the display. So I've got a few scenarios here already. The one I want to work on now is a new scenario where I insert a penny. Now the penny is different because it gets rejected. The coin does not get added to the balance and it doesn't appear on the display. So what I've done here is create a sketch of what I think the output should look like for the case of this feature when the penny is rejected. So I've just taken a screenshot of one of the other tests and kind of written on it in red with what the new test is going to be like. So this is typical with an approval testing approach. You begin with a sketch and the sketch is often based on previous working tests. So this shows that I'm going to need a new element in my printer. I need to also display the return tray. What's in the return tray? And at the start of the test, the return tray is empty. And at the end of the test, the return tray contains that penny that I inserted. Well, I'm doing test-driven development here. So now I've got my sketch. The next thing to do is to try and turn that into some kind of test case that could execute. Of course, I already started working on this. It looks pretty similar to the um, insert nickel test that I showed you earlier. I'm going to initialize my story with this new feature name. Um, the arrange step doesn't contain anything because I'm starting with an empty vending machine. And then I'm going to insert my penny and verify this, the whole story. So this test actually doesn't say anything about what I'm expecting to happen, only about what the user does. And then when I run it, of course, it fails because it's the first time I ran it and it doesn't know what to expect in the verified file. So it brings up this diff tool automatically showing what I've got so far. And then I can compare that against my sketch. So this is the part where I'm pretty certain this is not self-referential. This is referring to my sketch, which is like setting up what I expect this test to have in it. So comparing what I've got with my sketch, I've obviously got a little bit more work to do, but as a start, this is basically showing the bare bones of the outline of the scenario, so I'm going to approve that. And people might be surprised at me approving something that's obviously incomplete and wrong, but once I've approved something that um, takes me a step on the road, now I can refactor with green. 
And I know I'm not done yet. I'm not going to check this code in yet. Until it matches my sketch, I'm not done. But for the moment, I now can um, make some progress. Now, actually, the next step is to write some production code. So let's go over to my vending machine um, and the part that handles inserting coins. So at the moment, it's just accepting any old coin. So I might need to just give it a, a list of all the coins that it should accept. So um, coins in this have been just represented by integers. Um, and maybe I'll fix that later. But at the moment, that's a list of the coins it should accept. So if the coin is on that list, then we'll do what we were doing before. Right, so if I run this, I'm expecting my new test to actually fail now. Yes, so my new coin is now not actually being added to the, uh, the balance. Um, it's not being displayed that it's got money in and it's not being put in the coin list. So that's closer to my sketch than what I had originally. So that's another reason to approve a result that isn't ready yet. It means that when I get the, the diff against, when I make a change and I get a diff, it just homes in on the part that's changed since I last looked at this. So it really helps me to focus on the part of the test that isn't quite working yet. So I'm not fully there yet, but it's looking better. Because it's not enough that I've not put it into the coins, I need to put it in the return tray. So I better add some logic for that. So if the coin is not being put into the machine, it should be added to the return tray. And the return tray doesn't exist yet, so let's create that property. Um, and again, I'm modeling coins as integers, so um, that will do. And I'm just gonna make the, the setter private there because it's um, this is actually kind of, yeah, I don't want other objects setting that. Okay, so that's looking kind of hopeful. Now, the thing is, I need to also print my new um, my, my new public interface. It's got a, a returns that you can look at. And that's something I want to have in my printer too. So here I've already got some infrastructure in my printer for different um, fields on my machine. So it's actually quite easy just to add uh, the returns, which is actually very similar to the coins. And that change should mean that I now display what's in the returns in all my tests. So, oh, my tests have all failed, but I wasn't quite expecting that. Um, they've all failed with this system argument null exception, and that's because I forgot to initialize my new field. So let's just do that. I should probably construct that. Okay, let's try again. So my tests are still all failing, um, and that's because I changed the printer now, and it's brought up the diff tool to show me that there's a diff. Um, so this is one of the tests that I had before for the dime, and now it's showing also that the returns tray is empty at the start and empty at the end, which is actually perfectly correct. Now I could just go through each test and approve these one by one. And if I only had four tests, that's probably what I would do, honestly. But you know, sometimes you get a lot of tests failing when you, you change something like that. So I've got a helper script here, which is called Analyze. It's just a little script I wrote that goes through all of the failing tests. And it, and it tells me here, I found these, failing tests. And then it says the analysis. Failures can be grouped. All the tests in this list have exactly the same diff. And on that list is the accept dime test that I looked at just now and thought was okay. So it's telling me that the accept nickel, accept quarter and update balance tests are all have exactly the same diff, which is absolutely fine. So now instead of having to go through of all four of those individually, I can apply the same fix to all of them. So I'm just going to um, select all of those tests. Yeah, not the reject penny, those, those four. And then I can use this little plugin for verify to accept all of the received files for those ones. And now if I run these tests again, I should only have the one failing test that I'm really interested in, um, the reject penny test. So I can see now it's displayed the returns um, in both the before and after. And comparing this with my sketch, uh, this is actually looking pretty hopeful. I've got that um, penny now in the returns tray at the end of the test. So I'm going to accept this change as well. And now I should have all my tests passing. I think the feature is working. And I can just review my code a little bit. Yeah, that implementation looks all right. 
And then, of course, I should also just finally review the verified file for the uh, feature and check that it really does look like my sketch. Yeah, looks good. At this point, I don't need the sketch anymore, so I can delete that. I've just shown an example of doing behavior-driven development with an approval testing tool. And I think the crucial part that Dave and perhaps others are missing is that I'm using a printer. A printer is a piece of code that formats the text results in a way that's easy to read and diff. And that stops you from approving large complex output that contains errors you couldn't notice. Also, the test is not self-referential. You have explicitly chosen what to print and you have compared the actual outputs with what you expected and approved that result. And that is very different from a characterization test where you often just simply accept whatever text your program produced. Dave Farley is clearly a reasonable, thoughtful professional who was able to update his opinion of approval testing. He already did that when he realized it was not the same as acceptance testing. And he thinks it's useful for legacy code. But Dave, I think you need to update your views again. Approval testing is not the same as characterization testing either. You can use approval testing for new development, particularly for the larger outer loop in double loop TDD or BDD. Do you agree? Leave me a comment on this video.